Hey, what's up? My name is Nick and welcome to Tech House. Today we're going to be talking about installing NordVPN on your Mac. This is an M1 Apple Silicon and here is the Intel Mac. They are both run exactly the same as currently until today. No VPN provider has released an uh, app which is natively supported by the M1 processor. If that changes anywhere along the line, please check down in the description because I'll be sure to update it. Also, if you don't yet have a NordVPN, I'm also going to be including all the discounts that I find for it. So let's jump into the review. Let's start off by going to the website. Here uh, you can log in and once you're logged in, you have a pretty simple interface. There really is not much to go through, so we're gonna go through everything. Uh, so first what we see is services. We have uh, NordLocker, we have NordVPN and NordPass. These are three different apps that NordVPN offers and we'll get to those in just a bit. Let's uh, jump into NordVPN here, uh, more information about it, and then NordPass, NordLocker, and at the end there is downloads. And from here you can just download NordVPN and that will give you the options to um, select where you want to download. We of course have a Mac, so we're going to go to download for Mac OS and select the NordVPN Ike V2. This is going to open up our App Store and from our App Store we can download the app. Great, so what does it look like? When we launch the app it looks like this. You straight away can connect to any country you want. In fact, let's do that right now. Let's uh, go and connect to the United Kingdom and that's it. We're connected that's as simple as it can get. Uh, we are now using a VPN, but there's more to uh, talk about here. So let's unpack a little bit. Other than selecting a location on the map, you can see the sidebar has the list of the locations which you can select by name. And there's underneath here some speciality service which you can also connect to. So for example, P2P is peer-to-peer, -peer, which is actually going to increase your download speed. It's designed for torrenting. It's a little less secure a little less, I mean, really negligible, but yes, it's designed for uh, the best speeds possible. Then going up here, we have the settings tab and in the settings tab, we have a few things that we can configure. Let's go through them. In general, we have this auto launch when computer starts. If you use a VPN constantly, and then uh, that's a good option to have selected. Then CyberSec is a cyber security. It block ads and malware when connected. Nord has a list of IP addresses which it considers harmful and, well, just blocks them. Next up is VPN protocols. Uh, here we have a few options. Uh, use recommended protocol. Sure, that's pretty self-explanatory. Then Ike V2 is the industry standard right now, but it is quickly being replaced by WireGuard. And Nordlynx is the name that NordVPN chose to give this a WireGuard technology. So that is the fastest and most secure protocol that you can use. And I suggest that you can use it because you'll get the best speeds that way. However, there are two more protocols over here. This UDP and TCP. If you select one of them and scroll down, you can see that we have additional servers uh, popping up. The difference between UDP and TCP is that UDP is faster and TCP is slower but a bit more reliable. Uh, for our current use, we would almost always use UDP and TCP only if, for example, you're downloading a file and it keeps getting an error. Chances of that happening are not often. So let's stick to UDP. And here we have some extra service popping up. Here we have a dedicated IP option, and the best way to think about it is if a VPN is when you're wearing a mask and you continue changing those masks when you connect to a different servers, then a dedicated IP is a single mask which you use and then you'd be recognized by the mask, but of course your identity is always uh, remaining secure. This is specifically helpful when you're doing with high security apps like your online banking, as changing your IP constantly might cause suspicion from your bank and block you out. So having a dedicated IP also will help you bypass any kind of restrictions like that. Uh, then you have double VPN, basically. You go through one VPN and then from that VPN to another VPN. If in some uh, really strange uh, scenario, somebody is able to track from which VPN you are located, is going to track to a different VPN, and then there's no ways that he can track one more time back to where you are located. Anyway, it's um, it's it's a feature which is there and is nice to have, but I mean, uh, double security is nice, but I can't think of a scenario in which way you would actually really need it. Maybe if you're surfing the 
deep, deep web, maybe then <laughs> you might want to turn on double VPN just to be that extra sure. Obfuscated, wow, that's a mouthful and probably something that you will never need. It's for the times that you might want to travel to a country with heavy internet restrictions. Uh, you'd need to use obfuscated services to bypass their heavy internet restrictions. And speaking of uh, those kind of countries, you'll find that there is no China nor Russia available to connect to. Other countries like North Korea is also a no-go zone because they physically aren't allowed to build servers there. But on the plus side, if you do want to connect to a specific city, for example in the United States, there is these three little dots over here, and then you can select a region or a specific server, and you can connect to that. And look at that, there's 1,800 servers in the United States alone. Next up we have Help Us Improve, and if you select that, that's just going to collect some data anonymously and send it to VPN in order to help them improve their application. I suggest you turn this off, there's no need for that. Uh, let's go on to Auto Connect. Everything here is also pretty much self explanatory. When using an untrusted network, you can choose to connect. So if you're traveling a lot and you open up your laptop in a Wi Fi uh, hotspot, and then it's going to connect automatically. It says, I don't know which network that is. <laughs> let's connect. Uh, of course, if you're just at your home all the time, then there's no point of this. You can choose when to connect. I also have this a list of current uh, or trusted networks. So currently I'm on my Ethernet network and I can just uh, select to trust it. And now whenever I'm connected to my Ethernet, it's not going to auto connect. You might not want that. You might have to auto connect always. But this allows me full control over the app when I want to connect, when I don't want to connect. That's totally up to me. Also here you, said you have connect to so that when it automatically connects, you can choose which server to connect automatically. Moving on, we have the appearance. Here is dock and this is pretty much this app over here. If you use menu bar, then you see it goes onto this menu bar on top. Uh, if you're stuck in this, in the bottom you have preferences and then you just go to open preferences and then you can change uh, in appearance again uh, for both. So that's going to show both the dock and uh, the menu bar icon over there on top. Right, and then other apps. So let's get into these very quickly. NordPass is pretty much a one pass uh, alternative or uh, just a password manager in general. It's Nord's version. This is a paid add-on. Uh, if you are in the Nord ecosystem, you might consider it. It's actually quite good. Uh, Nord Locker is kind of a Dropbox alternative, but with a password. Let me quickly show it to you. So here it is. Uh, you must enter your password. And then it unlocks and you have your files over here. Uh, it gives you three gigabytes free right off the bat. And then you can add 500 gigabytes for a paid subscription. And then NordVPN Teams is something that you might want to consider if you have a business. And then the last final piece of the puzzle is your account, which pretty much just holds your expiration date. Well, that about wraps it up. In under 10 minutes, we went through absolutely all the features this app has to offer. And NordVPN has been my personal favorite for download speeds for the longest of times. If you want to step up your VPN game, there's always ExpressVPN to consider. Uh, check out the other videos that I've done on that. And if you think that you don't really need all these features and just want something for a little bit cheaper, well, uh, there is also Surfshark, which actually gives you unlimited amount of simultaneous connections. Whichever the case is, I put the links in the description for all the best offers I could find. So check those out. Uh, my name is Nick, and if you like this review, give it a like. If you loved it, consider subscribing and checking out our other content. Till then. Cheers.